Thank you. I'm delighted to be here, and I'm delighted that you're here. I studied the brain in love, and in 2005, Match.com, the internet dating site, came and asked me, why do you fall in love with one person rather than another? There's many cultural reasons, but I wondered if biology could also play a role. You know, people will say, we have chemistry. What do they mean by we have chemistry? So I began to study the biology of personality. There's two basic parts of personality. There's your nurture, which is everything you grew up to believe and do and say and think. And there's your nature, your natural dispositions. Of course, with epigenetics, these are constantly in contact with each other. The nature-nurture argument is over. It should be dead. Um, nevertheless, there's patterns to nature and there's patterns to culture. So I began by studying I, by, by, by going through all of the academic literature, looking for any trait that was linked with any biological system. And as it turns out, I found four of them. The dopamine, serotonin, testosterone, and estrogen system. So I decided what I would do is create a questionnaire to measure those traits linked with each one of those brain systems, and then put that questionnaire on a new website, um, uh, a division of match.com called chemistry.com, and then watch who's naturally drawn to whom. Uh, at this point, uh, 13 million people have taken that questionnaire in 40 countries. And um, we're all a combination of all of these. Uh, these are brain systems. We're not types. They're brain systems. Um, but we do have personalities. So I'm going to whiz through them and then tell you one of the things that I learned. If you are very um, um, expressive of the dopamine system in the brain, you tend to be novelty-seeking and risk-taking. The academic term is um, sensation-seeking. Uh, you have many interests. These people are most likely to go to college. They make the most money, and they lose the most money. Uh, <laughs> they explore not only physically but mentally, as you're doing today. They tend to be optimistic, independent, um, impulsive, unreflective. They look out, not in. And their most primary trait is they're mentally flexible and it's idea generation. They're very creative. A good example would be Richard Branson. As he said, the last thing he said, I've always thought that rules were made to be broken. Probably a lot of the people in this room would agree with that. Um, another example would be Lang Lang, the concert pianist. Uh, a dare, a dazzling, flair, charisma, youthful barato, uh, bravado, um, daredevil extremes. These are two very different personalities, but they've got the same temperament, that expressed by the dopamine system in the brain. The second uh, type is um, those expressive of serotonin. I call them builders. I had to make names for all of these various uh, types of people because I was working with a dating service. They tend to be traditional. Uh, social norm conformity. In fact, we've now found that region in the brain. They like the familiar. They're not scared. Uh, but they're cautious, uh, they're calm. This is why you take something like Prozac or Paxil to drive up the serotonin system, to make you calmer. They follow the rules, they respect authority. Uh, they like plans and rules and schedules. Uh, they like to be literal, uh, concrete. They're very good at um, uh, uh, numbers. Um, religiosity is in the serotonin system, actually. Uh, at least part of it is. One of the most interesting questions in my questionnaire was, uh, was something like, um, would you rather have loyal friends or interesting friends? Now, we all want loyal friends and we all want interesting friends, but this type cannot tolerate unloyal friends. And the other three types cannot tolerate, mathematically speaking, cannot tolerate uninteresting friends. <laughs> a good example is Hu Jintao, former president of the People's Republic of China. As a matter of fact, there's a gene in the serotonin system that is linked with social norm conformity, and that gene is most frequent in China and Japan. Another example, a cookie-cutter example of this type, uh, is Mitt Romney. The third, um, oh, these types um, go for each other. Uh, traditional wants traditional. And creative, curious, spontaneous, wants curious, spontaneous, creative. In this case, similarity attracts. On the other side, uh, high testosterone and high estrogen uh, differences attract. 
they might love each other but can't understand which planet they are on. Um, they tend to be, it's, the academic term is being good at rule-based systems. Um, they are good at computers, engineering, math, music. Uh, they tend to be um, inventive, exacting, uh, rank-oriented, competitive. As a matter of fact, if you inject testosterone into a dove uh, or a lizard, it'll start to fight uh, for rank. Um, they're emotionally contained. Um, decisive, bold, and direct. These are the ones that scream, get to the point. A good example is, is um, Steve Jobs. You can see it actually in his face. The high, uh, the high cheekbones, the heavy brow ridges, and the strong jaw are all built by testosterone. A good uh, female example, I think, is Hillary Clinton. Um, when she was asked uh, why she was attracted to Bill, she said, he wasn't afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> The third, the fourth of these four broad styles are those expressive of estrogen. Estrogen makes oxytocin. Uh, these people tend to do what I call web thinking. It's the way the brain is built in the womb. Uh, uh, they're imaginative. As a matter of fact, there's many more women in this category, and I do think that uh, this imagination, the way the brain is built, uh, gives women a tremendous uh, asset in the, in the modern business world. They tend to uh, have executive social skills. They can read posture, gesture, tone of voice. Um, they're intuitive. They see into your head and uh, can uh, say what you need to hear. Uh, they are nurturing, we call it pro-social. <laughs> trusting is a very interesting thing because, um, you know, if you trust the wrong person, you're sort of up the creek. But if you trust the right person, you actually save a great deal of metabolic energy. And you can see the way these brain, um, these traits will evolve together. If you trust the right person, you've got to be able to figure out who people are. And so they, uh, it, it, they evolve together, this ability to not only to trust, but to size up people so you can figure out who to trust. They tend to be introspective. Uh, they look in as well as out. Uh, they seek harmony. Uh, they're emotionally expressive. And they have what I call diplomatic intelligence. Um, uh, Oprah Winfrey is a good example. And I think Bill Clinton's a good example. You know, people are always wondering when we are going to get our first woman president. I think we've had our first woman president. <laughs> <laughs> Whole world knows he can't stop talking. He's emotionally expressive. He's the one that cried at his daughter's wedding, not his wife. And of course, he feels everybody's pain. <laughs> I think uh, Darwin is a great example of the combination, a brilliant combination of a very expressive of dopamine and the estrogen system. Um, we are putting people into brain scanners. We've done two studies so far. I'm working on it ac absolutely daily. We're beginning to map some of the brain circuitry of personality style. I won't go into that. I will end with two things, a story and the one thing that I've really learned. For millions of years, we grew up, we evolved in little hunting and gathering bands. There were about 25 individuals to a band. Uh, 10 or 12 of them were children, about 10 or 12 were grown-ups. They're all going over a hill together, and they suddenly see some mushrooms. Well, you can't have all the high dopamine types saying, ah, oh, let's try the mushrooms. You've got to have some of the high serotonin types saying, it's not in our tradition to try these mushrooms. You've got to have some of the high testosterone uh, types who say, eh, let's uh, make an experiment and um, feed the mushrooms to the gerbil. And we've got to have some of the high estrogen type who say, let's sit down and, and, uh, and, um, and pool our data about these mushrooms. The bottom line is we evolved to put our heads together. And indeed, I think the one thing, I was trying to think of this, how to end this this morning, and I thought to myself, what have you really learned, Helen? And this, I think, is the most important thing that I've learned from all of this to immodestly say that I don't anymore agree in the golden rule. Instead of treating others as you want to be treated, the point would be to treat others as they want to be treated, and you will reach into their heart and win. Thank you.